everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today we're gonna to be unboxing Euthia Torment of Resurrection. Now, as you can see from the size of this box and the design of it, it's very different than most board games that are this big. Most of them sit shorter to the table. They're not that high in terms of the box, and they're usually wider. This one goes for a tall and deep approach. It is very, very deep, to say the least. And this is one of two boxes that come inside the Legend Legendary Pledge Tier 2. Now, for those of you that are intrigued by this, never heard of it, I'm going to have a link to the Kickstarter that originally landed in the pin comment and video description where you can find more information about the game. But for your reference, I'm going to be unboxing one of two boxes in this video that comes from the Legendary Pledge Tier 2. So without further ado, let's go ahead and flip this gigantic box over to the opposite side. We'll take a look at the back of it quickly, and then we're gonna dive into every single component that comes inside the box. It's also worth noting that this game will also have an optional app that goes along with it. Here's a look at the back of the box. It mentions in the top left-hand corner, solo, competitive, and cooperative modes, all part of this strategic RPG. One to four players, 14 plus, 30 to 120 minutes per player. And it states, the land of Euthia is tormented by three mighty dragons. Monsters arrive from the heart of the dark magic known as Fair. It appears that ordinary people can do nothing against such evil, but hope perhaps lies in your hands. Some of the major features in the game that it wants you to know from the back of the box is that it has modular tile-based map you build out as you go, five chapters, places of trade, NPCs with quests, locations to mine or find treasure, and elementals in that top left-hand corner. On the top right-hand corner, it states you can build a character. There's six heroes, special abilities, unique play styles, gather and upgrade equipment. Bottom left, monsters, perilous combat, elite monsters, combo attacks, and player control controlled monsters. And in the bottom right you have eight scenarios, three scenarios with mighty dragons, walking destruction, the hunt, fear invocation, imminent threat, and lord's request. So there is a lot going on in this box. When you first open up the box, you're going to find a lore and art booklet. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at that in a second. We have the rule booklet underneath. There are also some stickers here, which we'll move aside for now. We have a scenario book, and we have an appendix, and that's not where it ends. There's more, and then we get into a whole bunch of reference sheets. Here's a look at everything that came out of the box that was on the very, very top that we just went through. We're going to take a closer look at each of these things right now. We'll start things off by taking a look at the lore and art book. Inside, you're going to find all kinds of lore, of course, and this one right at the very beginning says the Klandar Plain and has full narrative here to give an idea as to some of the backstory with this game. The artwork inside the board game, which is shown off in this art book here, is extremely nice. Here's a look at another snippet of lore. Now, we won't go through every single page here in this book, but I will show you a few more pages of art. This page here not only has art on the left-hand side, but a full storyboard for the Kickstarter video itself on the right. In total, this book is about 19 to 20 pages. Let's change our focus now to the rule book. You'll see the table of contents right on the front. It also mentions similar things we saw in the back of the box itself in the bottom right, but the object of the game is in the bottom left, and I'll read that out to you. It says that Torment of Resurrection is a game for one to four players where each player takes on the role of a hero, traveling across the land, fighting monsters, and liberating places of trade, mining natural resources, upgrading their hero's abilities and equipment, and completing quests. Although the goal of each scenario is shared between the players, players, the hero with the highest reputation at the end of the game is declared the winner. Now, this is the object of the game, of course, from a multiple players around the table situation. I'm going to focus on the solo specific stuff as we move through this rulebook. Here's a quick glimpse of the components that come inside the box here inside the rulebook. Again, we're going to see all these up close and we need to dwell on them too long. That component list moves into the next page as well, and then there's a setup section here for the scenario selection, the map, as well as choosing and preparing your hero, all detailed on the right. Here's a look at the next page, which focuses on the hero board, scenario board, trade board, and a bunch of other setup instructions. You'll also see illustrations throughout the rulebook. This should give you a good idea as to how it's laid out. 
In the top right hand corner, you can see a layout as if you were playing a four player game. Again, we'll talk about the solo specifics when I reach that section. Gameplay starting here at the bottom right of this page. I've skipped ahead in the rulebook to page 20 and 21, which covers some aspects of the combat. You have things like injury effects, damage effects, and you have illustrations nicely placed and laid out in the rulebook over on the right. Based on the table of contents, the solo rules are situated on page 31, which I flip to right now. You'll see them in the bottom right hand corner. Here's a close up shot for those of you that want to read it word for word, but summarizing, you have a standard setup at the beginning of the rule book. You're gonna use a couple bullet points here to make some changes to that setup, and then it starts moving into gameplay changes for solo play. Here's a look at the following pages, and as you can see, there's about two pages in total that you'll have to read to cover the solo rules, and then it's gonna move into the cooperative game rules. Again, for those of you that are interested in reading things word for word, hopefully this shot will help you with that information. In total, the rule book is around 36 pages or so. You'll see a QR code in the bottom right hand corner, which will take you to that optional app. It's worth noting that as of the recording of this video, the app is still under development, but it will be available soon. And now we're going to move into the appendix, which complements the rule book. The appendix is about 30 pages or so, and we won't go through every single page, but I want to give you an idea as to how this thing's laid out. Now, the page you just saw prior was similar to the reference sheets that are available inside the game, which pertain to the different heroes inside the game. So a good chunk of this appendix, almost up to page 16 or so, is going to focus on those heroes and what they're able to do in defining it. And then it starts getting into the different aspects of the game, like armor, jewelry, chests, and flasks, and breaking those all out for you to understand. This page is pretty cool for showing you the natural resources inside the game, as well as gems, things like that. But going back to the natural resources, they're broken in different sections here, mountain, lake, and cave, where you can find particular resources you'll be able to make use of during the gameplay. Just to avoid any potential spoilers, I hopped over a section all around encounters or quests, things within the game that you're going to want to explore on your own, but they're going to be great references in this appendix for them. We now get to things at the back of this, like the achievement sheet, and of course, breaking down the iconography of the game. The next booklet is the scenario book, and as we read on the back of the box, there are eight scenarios. So you can see them all detailed here in the table of contents. Now to avoid any potential spoilers in this book as well, I'm just going to show you page two and three inside of here to get a rough idea as to how these things are laid out, but I won't be showing you much more beyond that. Next up we have a pad of 12 sheets. These are the achievement sheets and they're double sided. Here's a look at the back side. Next up, we have a whole bunch of reference sheets per hero, so you'll be able to grab this, keep it next to the character you're controlling as a great reference and reminder. Here's an example of the back of one of those reference sheets. And again, these ones are a bit thicker than normal so they can handle some abuse. Heading back inside the box, let's go ahead and remove the next layer, see what we find. Seems like we found a number of card decks as well as some dice. It's worth noting that each of these trays worth of components can literally be lifted right out of the box and then still could be used for storage later on. With everything outside the tray, let's now take a look at all these components up close.
Moving right along to the next section inside the box, we have the Griffin bonus box here on the left and on the right, the miniature pack. Here's what comes inside the Griffin bonus box, and there is a booklet here, which is in multiple languages and will help you to set up the Griffin inside of your game. And there's also a miniature, so let's take an up close look at that. Here's what it looks like inside the miniature box. You might notice there is an empty space. A bit shocking when you first open it up until you realize they actually thought of actually having a specific spot with the rest of the miniatures for the griffin that was offered in the separate box. So now you can take your griffin out from that other box, place it in with these other miniatures, and ditch the other box. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a Kickstarter game with a separate odd miniature that doesn't have a space in the main insert. This needs to happen more often. So let's go ahead and check out all the new miniatures we haven't seen yet. Those miniatures looked absolutely awesome and that ink wash on them really helps to bring out the details. I was pretty impressed with what I saw there, actually quite surprised with the quality and the detail behind it. Uh, but taking a look here next at what's in the box, in the last third of the box there's a lot of punch boards. And this is just a handful of them for the actual heroes themselves, so let's go through these.
And now we've reached the bottom of the box where there's a ton more punch boards for standees and especially the map tiles that make up the land that you'll be exploring inside the game. It's worth mentioning in the prior shots you just saw, I was showing you the front side first and then the back side of each of those sheets. So it might seem like there was an insane amount of punch boards there, but that was front and back and each of those shots were back to back. a ton of punch boards at the bottom of this box. Now, of course, once you punch everything out and organize it, there's gonna be a lot of free space because as you saw earlier on, some of the miniatures are inside their own self-contained boxes. So you're not gonna need the styrofoam that's kind of inside the box. You can get rid of those pieces. That'll free up more space. And of course, if you've got that legendary tier two, you have another full box of stuff to basically swap out and upgrade components. So it'll be interesting to see what I can get everything back into just one of the boxes or I'll need to use two but as of right now I've got a lot of punching to do. Now just to add some clarity around what I mentioned moments ago around getting everything back into the box at the legendary tier two level that pledge has inside of it a legendary box with a number of upgraded components which I will show in another unboxing video but it also comes with an organizer and trays for everything here so when you punch out all those punch boards, you have places to put everything. So really looking forward to checking out that legendary box, which will likely give me all the answers I need in order to understand how this is all going to go back into a game box. And I'm really looking forward to doing that unboxing on the channel with you all and hope you'll join me for that. I also want to make mention that I will be doing some coverage of Uthea here on the channel to give you a good idea as to whether or not this game is for you for its future reprint in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo